ओके लेट्स कंटिन्यू आवर डिस्कशन फर्दर सो वी वर लुकिंग एट द सॉल्यूशन ऑफ कैलन जमानजिक इक्वेशन and were interested in the behavior of the solution in uh in the limit of large momenta okay when we scale all the external momenta by some large factor how the solution behaves in uh such a case that is what was uh, our interest the behavior of the solution for large external momenta okay so um let me quickly summarize what we have done so far so we introduced a a, a variable t okay with which we scale the external momenta and then we had a equation which describes how the green's function the renormalized green function um, i mean the differential equation that renormalized green's function obeys okay so we had found that t delta over delta t plus beta tilde lambda r okay del over del lambda r so renormalize um couplings <clears throat> okay so today's discussion um in fact most of the discussion has not been very specific to 54 theory okay so this is the discussion is uh, uh more i mean it's applicable to other theories as well because i am not assuming anything um really specific to 54 theory in in this discussion so i'm just saying that there is some some coupling constant which is dimension less than four dimension and there is some other parameters for example a mass parameter which is dimension full okay and this is the equation that describes the the behavior of green's function with change in the value of t okay this acting on g tilde this is what we had written last time this is equal to 0 and then um we search for the solution and in order to find the solution you recall that we had to introduce um running coupling and running mass running mass so i had also introduced this running coupling cost saying constant is not a good idea running coupling this is a constant lambda r at a fixed mu that's a constant and running coupling was defined by this equation together with its boundary condition okay and the boundary condition was that lambda r at t equal to 0 is same as lambda r sorry lambda bar the running coupling at t equal to 0 is same as lambda r that was the condition and this is the defining equation for the running mass okay where the boundary conditions are
okay so i never put a subscript r on the running uh, mass parameter and the running coupling okay here only for the renormalized couplings and renormalized masses i put r and then we found the solution okay, i should also remind what is gamma tilde m and gamma tilde phi so gamma tilde m is 1 plus gamma m and gamma tilde phi is d phi tilde plus gamma phi okay and remember mu is always fixed so what was the solution um solution was the following g tilde n r the screen's function at scaled external momenta where each external momentum is scaled by a factor of e to the t okay is given by the following g tilde n r so here um you have everything else fixed right so you have for a you have chosen a particular mu okay and correspondingly you have a mr which is a function of mu so, but mu is fixed so mr is fixed and lambda r is fixed and you are just varying t okay which means you are just changing the scale of the external momenta okay by choosing some value of t and that you can calculate uh find by looking at green's function at some fixed momenta pi but now you calculate that green's function not by putting lambda r m r and mu but rather putting lambda bar at um at value t okay so the running coupling at t then m bar at t and mu okay and then you have to multiply this exponential factor okay so this is what we have found last time and then we also saw that if you um we have also seen that if you put beta tilde equal to 0 put the beta function to 0 and put um gamma tilde gamma tilde m to 1 gamma m tilde to 1 which means you are putting gamma m to be 0 okay and you put gamma tilde phi to be d phi tilde which means you have put gamma phi to 0 okay you have put the anomalous dimension for phi to be 0 okay so that gamma tilde now takes the value uh, which is equal to canonical dimension of phi tilde okay canonical dimension meaning the mass dimension okay and similarly if you put the gamma m to be 0 then gamma tilde m is 1 because gamma tilde m is 1 plus gamma m okay and um um yeah I mean, this is when the case when you have uh, all the z's to be equal to one. Okay, there are no infinities, and you are not doing any renormalizations. Then, in that case, g tilde n r. That is something we saw last time. It becomes g tilde n p i. lambda r f 
pi tilde. Okay, you can so think of this e to the t as some s. So you are scaling all the pi's by a factor of s. Then g tilde n is without any s factor multiplying the external momenta, but the masses are divided by a factor of s, the mRs. Okay, and then you have an s power n d phi tilde. Okay, and that is what you would expect based on a knife dimensional anal analysis. Okay, knife power counting that uh, how many powers of what is the dimension of this g tilde based on that this is what you would expect but this expectation is true if uh, you do not get any you, you do not include any uh, corrections coming from the field theory okay no loops are included in this you have put put all those effects to zero and of course um, um, that is uh, that is not true in general. You will have to include all these quantum effects, um, and you will have singularities in these uh, loop integrals. So, also let's um, understand this factor. Okay, here what this is saying is, if you look at this piece, this uh, this left hand side, you have scaled up all the external momenta by some scale. Okay, so now some large scale so you have very large external momenta okay which is same as saying keeping the momenta fixed you scale down all the mass parameters okay here mr you scale down to a factor of 1 over uh, i mean a factor of 1 over e to the t okay so that's what you are doing and, and they are equivalent because you know when external uh, external mass external uh, moment are very large then these mass parameters that you have okay they do not um, they become effectively very small so either you see it this way or or that way both are uh, both are same okay um So above result is consistent with your with our naive power counting. Okay, and we will get, as I said, corrections from. from renormalization effects okay now um, before we proceed further in analyzing the behavior at large t for these greens functions let us look at the equation of the running coupling okay so up to here this is um, we had already done so let's look at first the the equation of running coupling constant running coupling and that will be useful in analyzing uh, behavior at large t so we had delta lambda bar t lambda R over delta T is equal to beta tilde lambda bar T lambda R. Okay. Now we will integrate this from some time uh, from some not time from some uh, value of T which we will take equal to zero to some value of some non-zero value of T. So let's integrate this. So we have d lambda bar t prime lambda r over beta tilde lambda bar t prime lambda r okay it's integral over dt let's put it prime all of them prime so t prime equal to 0 to 
I'll just omit this from 0 to t. Okay, and here I should have lambda bar. So here the integration variable is lambda bar. Okay, lambda bar is what I'm integrating over and beta tilde is a function of lambda bar. Okay, so when I put the limits, I should put the limit here. So at t equal to 0, you have lambda bar of 0 lambda r and here lambda bar of t lambda r. Okay, these are the integration limits. Which is just t. Okay, so that's the expression that we get. Now, note that from here, we immediately conclude that if beta tilde of lambda bar is equal to 0 for some value of lambda bar, okay, then t will diverge, then t will be infinite. your integrand, integrand which is 1 over beta tilde that is becoming 0 okay so integrand is sorry integrand is becoming divergent so your t will t will be infinite okay Okay, so uh, we will have more to say about these values of lambda bar for which beta tilde becomes zero, meaning the beta function becomes zero. Okay, we'll discuss more about this. But at this point, I also make a note of the fact that beta tilde of zero, meaning beta tilde at lambda bar equal to zero. So I'm putting the running coupling constant to be running coupling to be zero, and beta function at 0 is just 0. Okay, that, um, uh, I mean, this is true because you see the beta tilde or the beta function gets its contributions from Feynman diagrams. And right? you calculate these uh, loop diagrams and that is from where um, it gets these contributions. And if you write Feynman diagrams, they all bring some powers of the coupling constant. Okay, so if you have a Feynman diagram like this, I am drawing in 5 4 theory. So this brings the power of lambda r square. Okay, and so forth. So if you if you draw up to some particular order in lambda, then you will have a polynomial of some order in lambda r. Okay, and if you put lambda r to be zero, that polynomial will vanish. Okay, because there are no constant terms. Each of, I mean, these uh, there's there's no way you generate a constant term, right? Because these diagrams always come with the overall factors of lambda, lambda to the something, lambda r to the something. So beta tilde will be zero at origin. Okay, so. Um, This is also the other way you can say is that if you put all the couplings to zero, okay, then the beta tilde, the beta function will be just zero because there are no corrections now. Okay, so I'll do a slight modification, um, not really necessary, but um, probably it will be helpful that I don't use lambda, which I have been using for the for the 5 4 theory, instead I will use g. Okay, g will denote a coupling constant, uh, a dimensionless coupling constant. Okay, so that um, you know uh, we can free ourselves from from this 5 4 theory. Okay, so I'll just just use um, g to denote coupling, so that we never confuse that we are really talking about 5 4 theory but it's not necessary that I, I should do it. So,
Okay, by reserved for five to the four, meaning I had reserved for <laughs> five to the four. It's not that everyone has. So uh, I will use g instead of lambda. Okay, for the coupling, for dimensionless coupling in five four theory. So for dimensionless coupling in four dimension. Okay, so slight change of notation. Okay, so let's go back and so as I said that if beta tilde vanishes for some value of lambda, then this t is infinite. Okay, meaning you have. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see what it means. So s suppose. beta tilde of g bar okay now g bar is the running coupling okay instead of lambda bar i am writing g bar <coughs> suppose beta tilde g bar that is equal to 0 only for g bar equal to 0 okay not otherwise so beta tilde vanishes only when the coupling uh, coupling constant vanishes okay the running coupling vanishes or equivalently uh, the coupling constant vanishes and further it is positive otherwise okay so except for the origin it's positive everywhere so the the form is of this sort so beta tilde of g bar this is g bar and beta tilde at the origin is 0 and it is always positive so it has let's say this form okay now dg bar meaning change in the value of coupling running coupling is equal to beta tilde g bar okay, when we do a, a beta tilde g bar dt so when we do a small change in the value of t by a positive amount dt dg bar is beta tilde times dt so you see that the change is positive if you increase the value of t okay so you see that um, So you see that g bar of t keeps increasing okay and it goes to infinity as t goes to infinity okay so you do it successively repeatedly and because beta tilde is positive for all values of g or all values of g bar okay that's uh, that's suppose that's given to us in a particular theory then in that theory g bar will keep increasing as you increase t and in the limit t goes to infinity g bar will go to infinity and t going to infinity is the ultraviolet limit okay because if you make all the t's very large it means you have scaled up you have made all the external momenta very large okay so you are really in the ultraviolet limit it's called ultraviolet limit and similarly here for the same case where beta tilde is positive like what i've given here then g bar of t goes to 0 as t goes to minus infinity okay, and t going to minus infinity is the infrared limit all the external momenta are very small remember we have we have multiplied with e to the t so e to the t with t negative is a very small number so we are really making all the external momenta very small and now the running coupling that you should use in the right hand side right hand side of this okay, now here i have put already here okay that's what i'm calling g bar now that's that's going to zero okay but if you scale up uh, to large momenta then the coupling uh, running coupling is becoming infinite very large the other possibility is that suppose beta tilde of 
g bar is equal to 0 again only for g bar is equal to 0 so that is an assumption suppose this is what happens in some theory and beta tilde of g bar is negative suppose that is also given to us okay. otherwise in all other values it is negative except for the origin. So, uh, it looks like this, here I have g bar and here I have beta tilde of g bar. So, at the origin it is 0 and then it is negative. Okay, then what happens? Uh, following exactly what I said in the previous case, you can see that g bar of t goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. So, meaning as you take the ultraviolet limit, meaning take very large t, the coupling constant becomes very small. The running coupling constant becomes very small. Again, okay, that is a very good situation. If the coupling constants are becoming very small, okay, and uh, as I had remarked earlier, if the coupling constants are becoming very small, okay, then this on the right hand side, the Green's function that you have to evaluate, you do not have to go, go to very higher orders in, in the coupling constant. Okay, suppose you want to calculate four point Green's function. Okay. Now, if coupling constant or the running coupling constant is not very small, then to have a good estimate of this four point Green's function, you should in go to some uh, reasonably high orders in perturbation theory. Okay, so, you should draw lambda uh, uh, r squared, lambda r square diagrams, lambda r cube, lambda r 4 or whatever and go to some higher orders and then replace those lambda r's by lambda bar the running coupling. Okay. But if it so happens that the, the value of the running coupling is very small then you do not really gain by including very high order terms right? because they are going to be becoming uh, small very rapidly. Okay. The moment you go to a higher power of a small number it becomes very small. Okay. So, that is the advantage you can uh, get good predictions by uh, e even while you keep um, your calculation only to lower orders. So, okay, and in this situation, in this case, you also have g bar of t that goes to infinity as t goes to minus infinity that is in the higher limit. Okay, and because the coupling constants is becoming large here you cannot rely anything uh, you cannot rely on the perturbation theory right because perturbation theory can tell you something only when the coupling constants are small because otherwise what you are throwing away the diagrams that you throw away and do not calculate are much larger than what you are keeping. Right, so, uh, just to give you an example, suppose you are calculating four point function. So, you calculate this and other corresponding diagrams at order lambda square, lambda r square, but then at you also have these ones. Okay, many more you can. So, you have many more powers of lambdas. Okay. Now, if Usually you will either stop at this level, this order or some order or even let us say at this order, but you are then not including other higher order terms okay, which still have higher powers of lambda r. Okay. And the reason you do not keep is that what you are throwing is smaller, much smaller compared to what you are keeping because lambda r is small. Okay. But if lambda r is not small and corresponding lambda r bar or g bar as I am using now is not small in the higher limit then what you are throwing away are actually larger larger than what you are keeping right? because a large number raised to uh, power 2 or power 4 or whatever is larger than so g square is larger than g if g is greater than 1. Okay? So, you can you, you are not allowed to stop the perturbation series somewhere if your coupling is not small. Okay, so, in that case you cannot use perturbation theory. Okay, so, uh, 
Um, good. Um, now, a more general situation is the following. So here, I think I should draw like this. Okay, I can take help from here. This will be useful. So, a more general situation is okay, like this. So here I have G bar and here I have the beta function, beta tilde G bar. Suppose this is the behavior, this is the more generic behavior, right? So I have ensured that beta tilde of zero is zero because that is something we have already argued that should be the case. Beta tilde of zero should be zero, so I am starting there. Okay, and the beta function behaves in a certain way. Okay, now let's look at this one. So here, um, beta function vanishes at G1, G2, and G3. Okay. So beta function vanishes at G1, G2, and G3. Okay, we have already seen let me write it down. We have already seen that if beta tilde vanishes for some g bar, some value of g bar. In this case, I'm just not putting a bar on the top. These are some specific values, but if you wish, you can put. So, so here beta tilde vanishes for g1, g2, g3. These are the values of g bar. Okay. If it vanishes, then the corresponding time is infinite. Sorry, then the corresponding t is infinite. Okay, so let's analyze now first um, things in the vicinity of um, this this G one. Okay, this um, this point. So in vicinity of G one. Okay, so here if you see the g bar is 0 and the slope of beta tilde, okay, that slope here, the slope is negative, okay, meaning the derivative of beta tilde with respect to g bar, that's negative. Okay, so let me write down, write then, write that down. So here, um, d beta tilde g over d g bar 
is negative. Okay, slope is negative even though the value is zero here at g1. Now you start at some value of um, running coupling near g1. Okay, let's start here. Um, let's start here. Okay. Now, big. Now here, when I start here, let me give it a name. Let's call it G A. Okay. The real thing is G one. I am just taking arbitrary point G A. Okay. Now here, the value of beta is negative because this is the value of beta. Okay. So value of uh, beta is negative. So when I increase t, okay. Then the running coupling G bar should decrease, right? Let me remind you again. See here, it is this situation. Now uh, we have beta negative, and when I increase t, okay, G bar should decrease. In the limit t going to infinity, G bar goes to zero. Okay, but that was this situation. But in general, uh, because beta tilde is negative, as you increase t, G will decrease, right? This is somewhere, but anyway, you understand that it should it should decrease, okay? So decreasing means th these are the smaller values of g bar, right? So as I increase t, I should start moving in this direction. So I start moving. I was here. The beta tilde was here when the running coupling was this, this was the beta tilde and as, as I increase t I am going along this direction. Okay, so increasing t decrease decreases g bar and that is why I am going like this. Let's start from here this time. Some some uh, lower value of coupling constant, running coupling constant. Okay, you start from here. Now the beta tilde is positive. Okay, and you know that when beta tilde is positive, as you increase t, beta tilde will in, uh, the run the running coupling will increase. Okay, because beta tilde is positive, and this is the direction in which the coupling constant is increasing. Right, that's this, these are the larger values. So if you start from here this coupling, you start going along this direction. Okay, and this is for t going to infinity. So you increase t and in the when t is infinite, you reach here. You start from here, you start uh, increasing t, when t becomes infinite, you reach here. Okay, let me put it slightly differently. Just a second. Yeah, I want to beautify a bit. It's becoming too. Yeah. So as I said, it flows to here, and it flows to here. Okay. These were some starting values. Let's call that GB. So, and this is as. Okay, t goes to infinity and for this also t goes to infinity same for both okay and this is I'm using this first point we have already seen that if beta tilde vanishes for some g bar then the corresponding t becomes infinite okay so when t really becomes infinite you reach at this point g1 okay Good, now let's analyze things in the vicinity of G2.
Okay, let's look at here. So you see that the curve here has a positive slope. Unlike this one, it had a negative slope. The curve has a positive slope here. Okay. So d b tilde beta tilde g bar over d g bar is positive. Okay. So as we increase t, the running coupling moves away from g two. Right, because as you it's positive. So as you increase t, because the derivative is positive, the change in the value of g two will be positive. So if you start from here, let's say here, then you go further. You start going away. Okay. And similarly here. So. So here, um, and similarly here, if you take, okay, then as you as you take t going to infinity, you start going to the left, to the lower values of uh, to the lower values of uh, g g bar because your beta tilde is negative in this region, okay. So because it's negative, it starts going. This way, and here it's positive. It starts going that way. Okay, exactly the same behavior as here. It was negative, so it started going to the left. So here it is negative, so it starts going to the left. Here it is. It was positive. It started going to the right. Here it's positive. It starts going to the right. Okay, so what you have is this situation. So you go like this. And this is for t going to infinity. And this is also for t going to infinity. So um, this is what happens. And of course, if you around here, you go in the opposite direction, meaning you take t going to minus infinity. then instead of going away if you start from here you will start coming coming to this point let me use some other color um okay i should have done slightly differently so i showed that you get this behavior for t going to infinity okay and this behavior for t going to minus infinity okay so um this is how things will behave when you are um changing the value of t this is how the running coupling will change okay and now you see that these points are very special points okay because in t going to infinity limit or minus going t going to minus infinity limit you are reaching those points so these points are called fixed points so it's a fixed point the value of the the value gc let's call it gc of g bar okay i'm using g now uh, at which the beta function vanishes
is called a fixed point. Okay. Now there is a UV fixed point, ultraviolet fixed point. For example, G1 is an ultraviolet fixed point. Ultraviolet meaning T going to infinity. So in that limit, when you take large T, whether you start this way or that way, you are uh, reaching the point G1. Okay, so G1 is a fixed point, and it's a, it's called an ultraviolet fixed point. Okay. G1 is ultraviolet fixed point. Because in T going to infinity limit, the coupling G bar goes to G1. Okay. And similarly, you have infrared fixed point. So here, t going to minus infinity. Remember, we had scaled by e to the t, okay? E to the t. So when t goes to minus infinity, this is going to zero, right? So all the external momenta are really becoming very small, and that is what is called infrared. And it then, uh, and you see that here the behavior of this point G two is as you take t two minus infinity, okay? Then you flow towards this value of G two. Okay, if you take t going to infinity, then you go away from it. Okay, you flow to this point uh, if t goes to minus infinity, and that is why it's called an infrared fixed point. Okay, there is a special case where the the fixed point has a value G C, okay, like G one or G two, where G C is zero. Okay, if that value is zero, then the theory is called asymptotically free. I'll tell you why. Okay, it's called asymptotic free, or the phenomena is called asymptotic freedom. So, what is happening is that the uh, running coupling becomes zero in t going to infinity limit. Okay. So, asymptotic means in really in the limit t going to infinity. So, that is where you are approaching. So, you are approaching freedom. Freedom meaning free theory. You approach a free theory. A free theory will have uh, coupling constants as zero, right? There will be no interaction. So a free theory has no interactions, and because here you see, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this factor right now, okay? Because if you calculate this Green's function, okay, um, using zero couplings, couplings equal to zero, then you are basically calculating in a free theory. Okay, so if lambda bar goes to zero, you are basically in a free theory, and that's from that is where uh, from where you get this name asymptotic freedom. Okay, so in t going to infinity limit, you are approaching free theory because the running coupling is zero. Okay, that's a fixed point, so g bar takes a value zero. So uh, asymptotic freedom means running coupling g bar okay i'm still writing goes to zero yes.
okay that is gc equal to 0 is an ultraviolet fixed point okay a given theory may or may not be asymptotically free okay there are many theories which are not asymptotically free and there are others which are asymptotically free okay and that uh, this whether it is or not it details of, it depends on the details of that theory okay now um, i think i have already covered more than 1 hour so okay ne next we will look at some implications of um, these fixed points um, in the next video okay so that's what um, we will analyze in the next video what what do we learn from uh, these fixed points how theory how object how green's functions and other things behave when you are um, uh, when you have a, a, a fixed point okay and you when you are close to the fixed point okay see you in the next video